Hi, so I've hoped, I hope you've watched those videos. You better not have just drifted on and continued to look at this next video. Mm, I'm, I don't trust you, but anyway, there, there you go. We're going to go back to those videos as we go along. So you've discovered about the frequencies, you've, and, and obviously you can change the frequencies on here with all of the equipment that we're going to be using. But let's start at looking at the hardware. This is very simple. This is the uh, Turner G9XR um, transmitter. Lovely machine. This is what you need to get. This is the, and this is listed below. This is the one that fits into the back of this transmitter. Um, this is the receiver that goes in the boat. Um, very straightforward and quite inexpensive. But you also need an FTDI um, connector. And you have to have one that you can run at 3.3 volts. You'll see this issue repeated over and over again. And if you watch the videos, <clears throat> which I think probably 10% of you did, you will know all about that already. But you need to buy this. So you need those uh, four items to start with. And then while they're coming, and that's, a, you know, you're looking at about 160 bucks there. While that's coming, uh, you need to look at a really good overview on paper of this particular machine and how it works and how the menus work. And the one that I'm going to suggest is one from Hobby King for beginners. That's really good. One of the reasons for that is that we are not pilots. We don't have quadcopters. Um, what we have is probably a very basic requirement. Once again, because I in particular use Arduino to do all the complicated stuff and all the sexy stuff, um, I just want something that will churn out four channels accurately and, and I'm quite happy with that. So I have to, I have to learn uh, some of this information, but not all. Then, if you want to be brave, I've also got a link to a much more detailed um, instruction manual. Um, once again, because it's open source, a lot of things change from time to time. Um, and of course, part of all of this includes the notion that we're going with um, a new software that's going to run the um, transmitter. All right, what you also need uh, is a Windows computer and you're going to be downloading some material which is going to be an app that's going to work with Chrome. Don't get scared, it's all in there. So the first thing to do is to flash your transmitter. So this is where we go back to the original video. There is a difference, however. The place where you get the software from has changed, and that is also listed down below. So I'm anticipating that you've done all of that, and you're now um, well down the track to doing, your tr to, to doing the TX and the RX. So once again, now we go to the same video we mentioned in the first um, presentation. And that is just a wonderful one. Just go through that step by step and it will take you right the way through to the point where you bind uh, your transmitter with your receiver. You shouldn't have any troubles with that at all. But just go step by step as you, as you do it. And it's pretty clear. The thing that I've noticed is that, the only thing I've noticed with that video is that when he um, connects through this little device into the transmitter, he takes out um, the connector for the VCC, which is the voltage. Um, it's not quite so clear on the uh, video, so just make sure that you see that, that there is one clip missing. This is set up to go to the, um, to go to the transmitter. Um, other than that, it's really easy. I've, I've not really had any trouble with that, apart from hitting a hundred hundred brick walls as I've gone. But I, but I think these systems, I, I think this is working really well. So when you've finished all of this, you've got everything working together, and then the next thing to do is to turn on your transmitter and test it, and to see what's working and what's not. I find, really, the best way 
is to connect it all up and have a couple of servos so you can see what's happening as you go um, and have a play with all of that. Then the final thing to do once you've got everything working, it's all locked into your, into your model and some kids dying out there. And, and once you've got everything working as you want in relation to the, to the arms and the knobs and the switches, um, the next thing that you need to do uh, is put a fail safe in. And that's a very simple process. Um, it took me, I couldn't find this. Tim Seneca uh, helped me with this. And basically, you power on your, your transmitter and your receiver. You set the controls to the positions you want them to be in at failsafe. Then you press the button on the back of the TX mod module, which you did in order to, to get it all um, flashed originally. And you hold it down until you see the light on the receiver flash then turn it all off, turn it all on again, and you'll find that when you turn your transmitter off, it will do whatever you left it to do. So that's the final thing that you need to do. One other thing, uh, don't forget to consider whether you want uh, mode 1 or mode 2 on your new transmitter. You can buy either one. Mode 1 gives you the left-hand stick for controlling the throttle which I think most boaters and submariners do. Um, so you've got to be careful about that. If you get the wrong one, you can send it back, or conversely, you can find another video which shows you how to change it all around. Why do that? The other thing is, once you get it going, you find that this thing beeps all the time, and it's bloody annoying. I mean, helicopter um, pilots might need beeps all the time, but submariners don't. You, you, your boat tends to be not too far away. You tend to be able to see it, or you should, and uh, beeps aren't going to help that much. What's really going to help um, is your attentive sailing. Most of the times when I have problems sailing my boats, it's my fault. It's always my fault. It, it always is. Anyway, that's the key thing. The second thing I'm going to say is uh, telemetry, and I guess this is where we come into what could be a third video down the track once I've got my breath back and I'm thinking again, um, because uh, I'm, I'm not really sure whether we need tele telemetry in submarines. It's a bit like, you know, people say, oh, you know, have you put a GoPro on the front of your, of your, of your sub? Generally speaking, unless you're in a swimming pool, that is a complete waste of time. Um, but uh, telemetry is a similar question. Do we want to know the depth? Uh, I can see it. Or if I can't see it, I shouldn't have the boat in there. You know, that kind of, that kind of thing. Some of the stuff is just, uh, could be just gimmickry for um, submariners. The only thing I can think of with telemetry is that sometimes I throw buttons on and I forget they're on. You know what I was saying before about whenever there's a problem, it's generally me? I wouldn't mind something that reminds me, but, you know, basically I should learn how to sail my boat. Okay, see you later.